All right, now that welcome to the SG online meeting. We have our speakers, we have our evaluators, and everyone in site the meeting. Now, before we begin the meeting proper, let's welcome our club president, Willie, to give his opening address. Willie, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmaster and friends. Trust is defined as a psychology stage comprising the intention to accept probability based upon positive expectation of the intention of a behavior of another. When we look at the academic literature or leadership and trust, we see many prejudices of what leaders should do in order to build trust or to increase the willingness of their followers to make them self vulnerable. What offers stay united in previous research and study of this kind is how trustworthy leaders and their and the world to build trust are actually experienced by the people around them. Most offer their direct line report as well as the colleague or 360 degrees as we refer that in any a study that was conducted by some researchers. Many of us trust the leader based on influence, based on what they can do, not what they are able to do. Some of us are not. We, we, are, we are learning to be a good leader. We cannot be perfect in any of the leadership style. We can be a bit here, a bit there. We cannot be everything. Many people expectation, expect us to be Good in server leadership, in emo in emotional intelligence, confidence, creativity. But my fellow Toastmasters, we are all humans and we are here in Toastmasters to learn about leadership some skills. Many of us may be very good in influence, many of us are no good, it's no good. It's we are we are not good in inference. We are some of us are very good in building rapport. And because of one mistake that we make, people will give you a stand, a stand of rejection. The last class, the last eight months as a club officer at Singapore Online, I faced so many challenges, rejection, and even members giving me the idea of you are not a good leader, or you are not me, me to be a leader, you are me to be a support person. But do they know that? Are they able to be fulfill what the members need, or are they really want to show? Means now in simple words, they want instead of me doing the, the dirty work, they want to do the dirty work as show of their capability. Whereas they don't have an idea. They, they want to take my credit as their credit. So this do you trust a leader for that? Can I ask can I ask a guest? Mm, okay, let me let me ask Eliza. Do you trust a leader, uh, someone who, who always use other people's credit as their own? Sure not. <laughs> okay, so tonight team is trustworthy. So enjoy the rest of the meeting with table topic and you will know what is trustworthy. Over back to you, table topic master. Thank you for the, for the opening address, Club President, Mr. Willie. Now, we have a very important person to introduce. And that is our grammarian, Lee Buckley. And she will introduce to you 
parole as well as the word of the day. So if everybody is ready, and if you're ready, over to you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. The role of the grammarian, also known as the language evaluator, is to note incorrect usage of the English language, including incorrect grammar, words, and phrases. I will also be taking note of any catchy phrases or expressions used throughout the meeting. The word of the day tonight is conscientious. Let me show this on my screen. So conscientious, spelled C-O-N-S-C-I-E-N-T-I-O-U-S. It's an adjective and it can be used in two different contexts. The first is wishing to do one's work or duty well and thoroughly. So an example is, she was a conscientious and hardworking receptionist. The other context is relating to a person's conscience. An example, the policy does not provide exemption on the basis of personal conscientious beliefs. I would encourage everyone to use the word of the day, and I will also be putting this in the chat box. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Thank you, our grammarian for the day. And I will hope everybody will use the word of the day throughout your speeches and use it in the table topics as well. Now, speaking about table topics. Tonight, our table topic master or table topic mistress has come up with some questions for you. And I hope everybody will take the chance to participate actively in this table topics. Now, a quick introduction of our table topics, Jennifer. Friends call her Hot Mama. She likes reading to gain knowledge, singing to improve her vocal variety, and dancing to keep fit. And tonight, she will have a list of table topics for you to attempt. So if Jennifer, you are ready, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Uh, good evening, Club President, fellow Toastmasters, guests, a fabulous greeting to you. I will consciously give you as many table topics as possible for you, for each member to attend. The table topic session is interesting, entertaining, and challenging. The purpose of table topics is to have participants practice thinking and speaking on their feet by answering unrehearsed questions to challenge you to develop your impromptu communication skills. Tonight's theme is trustworthiness and therefore most of my questions are based on this theme. For the benefit of our guests, there are some tricks for you to attempt the table topics. Let me first share my screen. There are a few ways. One of them is prepped, which is point, reason, example, point. To give you an example, point, for example, is sinking into depression. Reason, because circuit breaker situation does not allow me to go singing, dancing, and meeting my friends outside. Example, I'm stuck at home, now chatting on WhatsApp with friends, singing and dancing alone is uninteresting point sinking into depression another way is 
PPF, which is past, present, future. Past. My son's planned wedding on 21st March 2020. Present. Due to COVID-19, his wedding is postponed to a later date in the year. Future. His planned wedding at the end of the year will proceed, assuming COVID-19 situation improves. Of course, there are other methods like the pendulum and others that you can use to attempt the table topics. You have one to two minutes to speak on the topic that you choose from the questions that I will show on screen later on. At one minute, the green card will show, or rather the green screen. At one and a half minute, the yellow screen. At two minutes, the red screen. And then you have 30, min 30 seconds to wrap up your speech. I encourage everyone to give it a try. And I also encourage you to use the word of the day, conscientious. So now let's start with the table topics. Can I have some volunteers, please? Can, uh, how about Vesco, you want to try? Of course, I'll try my best. Yeah, pick a topic. Topic, title, topic uh, five. Number five. Yes. Okay. Can you see? Whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted in important affairs. Okay. By Albert Einstein. Yeah. Let's start now. Yes, you can. Okay. Thank you for the chance, Kaden. I will try my best to explain this uh, this topic on oh, in my own perspective. See, I see the Albert Einstein's proverbs that said here. The first, I will, I will go, I will, uh, I will. Can hear you. Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. Here, whoever is careless with the truth in small matters cannot be trusted in important affairs. In my own perspective, I see that it is absolutely true. For example, you see, uh, I mean that uh, when you say to your friend like this, uh, hey, uh, hey, dude, hey, sister, uh, it is like an example, hey, sister, tomorrow uh, we'll go to trip like this. But it is like a joke to you. Then someone put it serious. Your sister put it as a serious mother. And at the end, when until tomorrow you said, "Oh no, uh, yesterday I was joke to you," so you so it means that some uh, it means that he didn't uh, he is not consciousness or he is not he is careless about the truth because he said to his sister, for instance, he said to his sister like tomorrow we'll go to a trip or tomorrow we'll go to a party like this then his sister uh well prepared already and when until tomorrow his sister said okay then let's go then he said oh no tomorrow i just talk to you so when at the time he has a uh, has a serious mother serious problem then he said to his sister that okay, okay uh, can you please help me this uh, i i got a trouble then uh, maybe it, it is automatically his sister will say, oh no, maybe you joke again, right? Because because you, you didn't care about someone's trust to you already. Then you broke uh, someone's trust to you. You are not, uh, you are not, uh, so here in this, in this, in this perspective, in these conditions, you are not, you are careless about the truth. So when someone's lost his uh, confidence, his truth to you, it's automatically when you say the serious mothers, it cannot be trusted anymore. So you uh, should be conscious, please, in your life. I mean, you should be uh, should be uh, care of uh, uh, some.
trust of some others trust to you i mean this is my own perspective about that uh, about these uh quotes about these proverbs and thank you for the time thank you vasco yes it's yes, true. My pleasure. thank you yes it's true that sometimes uh, when you joke on small matters and uh, the other party took it so seriously and then the next day you said oh you were joking and that really hurts a lot and people don't trust you anymore. Thank you so much. So may I have the next uh, volunteer, please? Sorry, Jennifer, interrupt me for a while. Yeah. Um, the timer is how much? So okay. can the speakers please pin the timer when you're doing the table topics? Okay, uh, can, can I have a volunteer? Uh, I can try. Uh, who is that? Uh, this is Jin. Jin. Okay, can, uh, can someone take note of the name? Uh, okay, can you pick up a topic, please? Yes, uh, uh, Jin, Jin, please. Sorry? Yes, yes me. I believe Jin wants to speak. Can, can we see? Because I can't Jane, see. Jane, yeah. you want to speak next. Jane, Jane wants to speak next, is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I'll choose people topic. Oh, uh, which? Number six. Number six. Willie, yes. can you take note of the, the, the name of the participant? Okay, number six. Um, but uh, Madam, Madam, I have a, I have a question. I cannot, I cannot see the timer. Oh, I, I mean, it's black. Timer, timer, please wave your hand. Ahmad, yeah, can you see him? No, I cannot see his neck. Uh, uh, I suggest that when the time is up, you can spotlight the timer. When it's come to green, you can spotlight it. So the timer will be spotlight to everybody. Can you see? Yeah, but my, my, my internet connection is not stable. So I cannot see the image. I cannot see did you? You you you. Okay, now can you see the time? You share the screen after that. Type in the chat and then stop the sharing. Then she can she she can see the timer. Uh, okay. No, uh, can you can you type can you type the timer? Signal in the chat box. Can you see the 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 topics now, or you can? Yes, I can. I can see the topic. Okay. So maybe timer can shout later when it's green and, and, and yellow and then red. No virtue is more universally accepted as a test of good character than trustworthiness. Okay, let me see. No virtue is more universally accepted as has a good character than Charles Wilson's. I believe this is true because because no one no one has good character if they are not trustworthy. For example. If I ask someone to do something or to help me and uh, he turned, he, he said he cannot, he said he, he will, but in the end, he, he, he doesn't. So I, 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 I don't think his choice was in it. He has trustworthiness 
And I don't think he has a good character because, because he, he tried to, he will not, he does not show a good character because he, he, he does not do what he said. This is important. It's important to do what you said to win trustworthiness and to show a good character. Uh, that's my point. That's the Madam Take Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, if somebody said that they want to do something for you and in the end they didn't, that, that's uh, not a good character uh, of a trustworthy person. Thank you so much. May I have the next volunteer for the next topic? Can I have more conscientious members to attempt the topics, please? Abdul, you want to try? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, I like to try. Right, which which topic? Uh, I don't see anything in the thing. Uh, you pick up any any of the questions. I have uh, one, two, three, four, seven to twenty. Uh, let me get eight. Number eight. Yes. Okay, the only way to make a man trustworthy is to trust him. Okay. Okay, uh, let's say for example, your friend. How can you trust your friend? A man, or even your coworker, anyone that is close to you—it could be anyone that is close to you. When you are going through some hardship, or if you need anything that is important for you, try to see if he can help you in any way he can. For example. Let's say I need help with him coming to me and guiding me, walking me through whatever I need in life. So the way we see it is that just by communicating with him, how he responds to you, what he does for you, stuff like that. But many times you see the people that will do for you, you think they'll do for you, they'll help you but it doesn't work out the way you want it to be, if that makes sense. Why? Because everybody is different. They have different thinking. Their mind is different. It could be maybe they don't know how to solve your problem, or it could be they don't want to do for you because you didn't do anything for them in return. Or it could just be not caring at all for whatever reason it is. So what I say is that it happens to everybody, I believe. It happens to you too also, because it happened to me too. Not once, but a couple of times. Do I take it personal? Yes and no. Because a true friend that should have a common sense that if he needs my help, how can I assist him? How can I go about that? So in life, we just have to be smart who we pick and choose. If they're not there for you, just leave them alone. Let them go their way. You go your way because life is not going to be always perfect the way you want it. So what I say is that we all have to be mentally strong and accept our human nature the way we are. So this is what I was going to say. Thank you. And back to you. Thank you so much, Abdul. That's true that uh, sometimes you have to trust that person. 
uh, like it or not, uh, because you, you don't really have a choice. But then when he shows his true color after that, then you, you know that this is not the guy. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Uh, just now somebody said, uh, Jen, was it Jenny who wants to pick the next uh, table topic? Did I hear that? Jerry. Jerry, is it? Jerry? Jerry, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Yeah, pick number table topic number seven, please. Number seven. The glue that holds all relationships together is trust. And trust is based on integrity. Our fellow, you are our fellow Toastmasters. In this modern world, where many things are going very quickly at a very fast pace, and a number of things happen to be going online, this and line, there is one thing that never changes. In all relationships, I agree, is the trust. Trust is you know, for thousands of years, makes all relationships. Why I say so? In the past, if you want to, before the internet, all this happened. What, how people do business, they build on trust. They build trust on business relationships. Now we have internet and all that. You also have to be trustful to a person. Stay mm -hmm. for instance, I cite an example. Doing online selling. If I go to enter, buy something, a goods from a buyer, a seller. Now, with all the pictures, all the videos, I can easily be done, convinced, I can be persuaded, I can be convinced to whether if whether I wanted to buy that good or not. Yes. The, what determines the trust is after when I click it, say I want to buy. Okay, put my credit card inside there, all the numbers, everything. Take for instance, two weeks from now, I still never receive the thing. And the person still carries on advertising such a thing. Do you think I want to trust that person anymore? No, absolutely not. I will more or less will ask the person to refund me the money. Hence, the trust is very essential. Whether it is now or thousand years from now, it is still the glue that the that holds all relationships together. If not, why is that human people saying about integrity, trust? And myself, in my own profession, I work in the accounts. When I work in the accounts, people, and trust me, said all those recording to try to do up the set of accounts. Here, then they, of course they trust me. They trust me is based on integrity. Integrity of the work, type of work and type of qualification I am the holding to do up a proper set of accounts. Without that, why should the people give me a set of accounts in the first place? This question about the glue itself, it is an invisible glue, an invisible glue that holds all of us, whether it is thousand years in the past or whether it is a, a thousand years in the future. It will always remain as long as human societies are still together or they group together in this kind of whole world. Uh, so I can say, I agree. The glue, the whole all relationships together is trust. Trust is really based on integrity. Integrity is getting very rare now. Hence, maintain integrity at all times. Back to you, table topic master. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry. Yes, uh, integrity is definitely a very important uh, uh, item. Uh, it's getting in, rare too. Yeah, it is. It is uh, even among, sometimes among uh, your own uh, siblings, uh, that can happen as well. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. May I have the next uh, volunteer, please? Uh, Jennifer, me. Jennifer. Uh, CJ, yeah. Num CJ. Number 11, please. Okay. If people trust and love you, you will never walk alone. Fantastic Friday, Club President, fellow Toastmaster, and distinguished guests. I fully agree with these words. If people trust and love you, you will never walk alone. My friends, trust is so important in a relationship that if you have trust with your partner, she will love you. Your spouse will love you if she trusts you. For me, 30 years ago, I trust and I love a football club which I support since 30 years ago, and that is Liverpool FC. And today, I'm so happy because after 30 years of conscientious waiting, I have finally got the champion for Liverpool FC. And in the future, I believe that this Liverpool FC will become the best football club in the future. My friends, i like to sing the Liverpool song for you today. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, you never walk alone. My friends, I never walk alone because I have so many football fans together with me throughout my journey. Ladies and gentlemen, I challenge you to love and trust so that it will improve your relationship today. Back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> that was fantastic singing. <laughs> You use uh, Never Walk Alone as one of the, uh, some of the lyrics for your song. <laughs> anyway, yes, I heard Liverpool won uh, from my two sons. They, they are fans of Liverpool as well. So you can be friends with, with them. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, CJ. Well done. May I have the next? Uh, I, can, I can say. Uh, Azmina. Yes. Yeah. Azmina, yes. Uh, I can have uh, number 16. Number 16, okay, coming up. Make your judgment trustworthy by trusting it. Uh, Madam Toastmaster, my topic is make your judgment trustworthy by trusting it. So in order to make our judgment trustworthy, we have to trust on ourselves first and we have to we have to trust the surrounding. We have to trust the people around surrounding the work. And we have to trust our family. Trusting them means we, we have to have belief in ourselves. In order to have belief in ourselves, we must, we must be empathetic with, with the people around us. We must understand. We must have capacity to understand them, to, uh, to know them, and to judge them. and trust them and by trusting means that uh, we must have a leadership quality within us and we must uh, have a vision and proper plan so that we can uh, be on the path and we can be firm whatever we decide and we have a trustworthy personality and if we believe in ourselves and if we believe in whatever work we put in our efforts to and we believe in others, then the atmosphere will become trustworthy and it is easy to progress in such atmosphere and, and everyone will get chance to progress. And we must, uh, we must have a firm trust in all the situations. And uh, so today I am very conscious about uh, delivering my topic. Thank you. Thank you, Asmina. Thank you. Yes, of course, uh, you have to trust your own judgment. Yeah, thank you. 
May I have the next person, please? Who, who yeah. would like to volunteer? I am the next one. Uh, Rasman Preet. Raman Preet, yes. Raman Preet. Yes. Yes. Uh, number 15? One five. Yes, one five. Okay, coming up. Trust your own instinct. Your mistakes might as well be your own instead of someone else. Dear uh, Table Topic Master, Club President, and fellow Toastmasters, a very warm and hearty good evening to all. I fully agree with the statement, trust your own instincts. Your mistakes might as well be your own instead of someone else. This is my life. I am the person who is responsible for me. I am the person responsible for my actions. Because whatever action I'm taking, I am taking it with my own instinct, my own ability to think, my own ability to act. If I do not have trust in myself, because me, I am my own soul. If I do not have trust in myself, from where will I get that guts to trust on, to have trust on others? So yes, definitely, it's very important that you trust your instinct. If your instinct says, this has to be done in this way, please do that. Do not be afraid of your mistakes. Because if I, I'm making a mistake, I myself am responsible for that. Because I trusted myself, which is my supreme being. If I do not have trust in myself, there is no question at all that I can trust somebody else. And if the person in whom I'm having the most trust, if I am making that mistake, yes, that is my mistake. And I take full responsibility of that instead of putting that responsibility on someone else. So yes, trust your own instinct. Very important principle of life. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day, Table Topics Master. Thank you, Raman Preet. Yes, of course, we have to trust our own instinct and whatever mistakes we make, we have to own it. Thank you so much. May I have the next uh, volunteer, please? And Jen, um, I believe Rajan is the next speaker. He's speaker number six, and then I follow after that, just to keep the same order. So just to help you out, it's in the chat. Uh, no, I, I, I can't see the chat. Uh, you, you mean you, you want to pick up the... Uh, Rajan wants to pick a table topic, is it? Correct. Rajan, then after that, you, yeah? Correct. I think okay. Rajan has uh, disconnected. So oh, if you'd like to go first, yeah, Vikana, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, you have ordered chaos. <laughs> Okay, so Jennifer, I'm up, I guess. I'm on the chopping block. So uh, let yeah. me see what, what is, what do I have to uh, choose from? What number? We have all those uh, in bold. About three. Number three. Number three, yeah? Correct. When someone trusts you, gift them your trustworthiness. <clears throat> good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, fellow Toastmasters, from wherever you're visiting from. I've been given a lovely topic. When someone trusts you, give them with your trustworthiness. What an apt saying. You know, because if someone has trusted you and you do not, and you give them wrong information or make, or you make them lose faith in you, then you totally lose their trust and faith in believing you. Um, I'm already seeing green by the timer. It cannot be possible. I'm like only 20 seconds in, but going on, I loved uh, what topic, what CG had got was, you never walk alone. Being a fan of football and especially getting that as a tagline, it is a gift for a fan. 
And I loved how he ran with it. I love how he sang with it. So coming back to my trust and trustworthiness, what I would say is that if someone is trusting in your decision or if someone is saying, hey, I trust you and you should be able to be able to guide them, you should be able to help them out, whether it is just nurturing them, whether it is even in the Toastmaster role, whether it's just giving them feedback, whatever it may be, you have to develop that trustworthiness and then build on it and then build further on it. And then you get to a level where you know that you cannot be wrong or, you, or the person starts believing in you saying that you can't be wrong. Now, have, do people sometimes let other people down? Yes, they do. That does always happen. But sometimes there are certain circumstances why that happens. And sometimes it just, between the two individuals, it's just not a right fit. Or maybe they've got another alternative mode to it. So what I would like to say at the end is, if somebody is trusting you, you should make sure that you earn their trust and you deliver on it. And back to you, Jennifer, table topic, mistress. Thank you, Chaudhary. Thank you, uh, Bikana. Yes, uh, it's true. If someone trusts you, you actually earned it, and therefore you must show them that uh, you know you are really trustworthy. The next one is uh, Rajan back yet or not yet? If not yet, then we will have Elisha. Uh, I'll choose number one. All right. Let me pin the timer first. Uh, okay. Okay, let me pin the timer. Okay. I pinned already, but I still couldn't see him. Okay, but now the timer is green. Can you uh, take the green off first? Okay. Yeah, okay. So Forgiveness is the highest degree of a trust in a better man. Forgiveness is the highest degree of a trust in a better man. Okay, I've heard quite a few of the topic about trust. In my mind, I was thinking, trust, in my experience, also has a degree of it. It is not easy to build trust. And also, trust means different to different person. It's also depend on what matter incidents of course if you're in a marriage the betrayal is is certainly a broken of trust that is hard to face nonetheless forgiveness is really the way because human beings do make mistakes as you get older you begin to understand what life is and you know Whatever mistake that could happen, let the bygone be bygone. There's a way you start a new page. If you keep holding to it, you can't go on. Yes, to me, touch trust has many degrees. But I also, through my experience, I also believe that forgiveness is a way to rebuild trust. I don't think trust, can, once trust is broken, cannot be rebuilt because I have, I have really gone through that. It's a matter how much you can forgive and let go. Everyone need a new chance. Everyone make mistakes and everyone could, be, could change as you get older. Think about it, if you make a mistake, and you will never be forgiven, and you carry that for the whole, your whole life. And the fact is, you have changed. So I truly think that forgiveness is really that you need to have, and it's really the highest degree of a trust in a better man. Back to you, table topic master. Thank you, Alicia. Yes, it's true, forgiveness is the highest degree of trust. Sometimes, 
it's easier to forgive. You can forgive someone, but you cannot forget what he or she did. Thank you. Uh, so next uh, person will be Thomas. Please don't forget uh, to use the word of the day, conscientious. Can I have number 12? Number 12. The best way to find out if you can trust somebody is to trust them. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas. So this statement states that the best way to find out if you can trust somebody is to trust them. I would love to disagree with this statement because at the end of the day, we have to see what is at stake. Perhaps it's something really, really important such as a business deal or such as committing to someone for life or such as asking for help even. The stakes are very high. Can we really afford to trust them in order to see whether they are trustable? Perhaps not because too much is at stake. I would love to propose this solution to all of you and that is to do a survey with those around them, those who know them, those who have connected with them before, those who have worked with them before. Because when you are able to gather the opinions of all the different people around them, you will have a better picture of who they truly are, right? It can be their friends, it can be their colleagues, it can be their classmates even. Gather those opinions, do some scouting of yourself and understand truly the person's personality. Of, of course, you do not just want to rely on the opinion of just one person, but rely on the opinion of multiple people and find the consistency in the opinions of these people itself. When you find the consistency, you can know whether that person is trustworthy or not trustworthy itself. So ladies and gentlemen, I would love to beg to differ from this statement itself because some situation is indeed too important for us to even commit a degree of trust without doing our own research itself. Because at the end of the day, word of mouth is a very powerful tool. And so looking back at our own personality, the people around us, do they trust us? Do we do something which will allow the people around us to trust us? Because when the people around us trust us, even people who do not know us will trust us as well because they will seek the opinion of others and eventually that is your personal brand. That is how you portray yourself to others. Thank you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Thomas. I agree with you actually. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Um, Shan Shan, uh, how many more speakers can we have? Shan Shan? All right. If anybody wants to take on the table topics? How many table topics already? Ten. Ten. You can have five more. All five, right. Five more, is it? Okay, can we have uh, more volunteers, please? I have a timer right uh, in the chat. Okay, thank you. Can we have uh, some more people, please, to volunteer? Okay, so I would like to try. About, so who is that? Me, Shen. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, let's go for number four. Number four. Trust takes years to build. Seconds to break and forever to repair. Thank you, Jennifer. And yes, that is certainly an interesting topic. It does takes years to build a trust, seconds to break, and forever to repair. For example, I have this friend of mine, and we were very close to each other from young, from, from childhood, even shared the same preschool, in the same school, primary school, secondary school, all the way until 
after secondary school, all the way into adulthood, everything. But just one tiny incident, and the trust is broken. And from that moment onwards, I have not spoke with her, seen her in person or anything. It just, she doesn't want to con be contacted, everything. So yes, it does take years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. So ladies and gentlemen, trust is easily gained, easily broken, but hard to repair. So if you could take a moment and just enjoy that trust, it will do you a lot of good. So ladies and gentlemen, remember this mantra. Trust takes you years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. So just do not take trust lightly. Thank you. Back to you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, it's true that uh, it's not easy to repair a broken trust, especially once somebody trusted you a lot, you know. So yeah, once uh, it's broken, not easy. Very difficult. Thank you so much, uh, Shan Shan. Uh, how about LD, our guest? Would you like to try just a moment? Let me just uh, uh, let me just go back. LD, would you unmute yourself and try? Oh yeah, yes, uh, certainly, uh, madam. Yes. Uh, Maybe I would like to choose the topic number uh, 10, ma'am. Number 10? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So... I trust, I trust everyone. I just don't trust the devil inside them. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, madam. So, uh, I agree with this uh, quote uh, by Mr. Troy Kennedy Martin because I think... Uh, Trust uh, is an important uh, topic uh, to discuss, and when we trust, uh, we consciously uh, trust the person uh, we involve with, madam. Uh, for example, I trust uh, my uh, lecture uh, for giving me a feedback about my dissertation, for example, and it, and that I know that. Uh, his uh, when uh, he make correction, I trust him because uh, I know that uh, I made something wrong and I have to repair it uh, like that, uh, revise it. But sometimes uh, my lecture is a human being, so uh, there's also a devil inside him. Uh, that's why uh, uh, I just don't trust the devil in it because sometimes uh, my lecture. Uh, angry. Yeah? I think angry is a negative emotion uh, to, for example, as an uh, academic uh, purpose, for example, a relationship between a lecturer and a student. I think uh, they have, uh, for example, the lecturer, uh, they have to trust the student as like the student trusts the lecturer as well. So there's a harmony uh, between the relationship. Thank you very much, madam. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, like me, I trust a lot of people, but sometimes uh, it is yeah. the devil inside <laughs> them that yes. it's so difficult for you to see. You don't know. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. And uh, can we have the next one? We can have th three more speakers. Can someone else volunteer, please? And uh, Noriko Tanami, would you like to try? Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll pick up the table topic. Uh, let's see. How about two? Number two. Mm -hmm. All right. Without trust, 
Mm-hmm. No company can ever hope for excellence. Okay. Just a moment, please. You pin the timer. With, without trust, no company can ever hope for excellence. Yes, I, I definitely agree with this word because what, um, how can I say? Well, how big company, for example, how big company do like the big business or international business, global business, but if once, once they lose their trust, it's the products will be not, you know, ex, not excellence anymore. You know, I know some, you know, I'm a guest today for this meeting and I'm from Japan, I'm Japanese. And uh, I know some Japanese companies are not big, but the, but they are not big, but medium company, but they making, they were making a great products, but the, they, told a lie, a small thing, small lie, but the, the, you know, the TV shows got the news, oh, they are told, telling a lie. So, you know, the people think, oh, they are telling a lie. Even though they are producing the good products and the good services, they don't believe them anymore. So it's, a, I think it's not a good thing for, so without trust, so they need trust if they want to keep doing good business and a good making good products, yeah. I believe so. Thank you very much for topic master. Thank you, Noriko. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yes, it's true. Uh, you said you are a guest. Uh, are you from some Toastmasters club? Ah, okay. So Toastmaster is new to you too as well. Yeah, I'm just looking for the club, nice club. So okay. yeah. Thank you so for join. Join us, join us. Thank you very much. Do you have any Japanese members in this club? Uh, Willie, President, do we? Noriko, you can always be the first. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Don't thank you very much. <laughs> okay, with you, very Noriko proud Khan. of that. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I know someone speak Japanese well in this club. <laughs> yes, yes, yes uh, uh, CJ, he can speak very well. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank, thank you very much. Okay, so um, we can have uh, an, another speaker. Um, can someone pick, please? Uh, and is it Angela? Angela, you want to try, is it? Angela, are you there? Yes, I'm a speaker, but if nobody else is volunteering, I will volunteer now. Okay. Pick a topic, please. Nine, please. Thank you. Being trustworthy requires doing the right thing and doing things right. Thank you, Jennifer. You're welcome. This quotation from Don Pepper rings very true to me because I've been a club president and I'm coming to the end of my year and handing over to a new team. And when you're in a team, it's very important to tr trust everybody else. The most important person is the treasurer. I'm very lucky that I've got a new treasurer who I trust. And the outgoing one was also somebody I trusted. And I looked around and people you don't know, and you think, could we trust them with all the club's money? Are they overseas? Might they disappear? Can you trust them? Sometimes, I mean, you're giving them all this money <laughs> and people are debating, should, should they spend the money on joining the club? And you think, they're giving us some money. What are we doing with their money? Can we trust the person we're giving it to? So being trustworthy requires doing the right thing. And in Toastmasters, the treasurer has to do all sorts of other things and so do the other members paying the money in handing the money over at the end of the year checking that you are handed 
uh, receipts for money you claim to have spent and so on. So the treasurer is, it's very important to trust them. Now, I've been in clubs where the treasurer has disappeared overseas, not been able to get back. And you, you're all sitting there worrying and worrying and worrying. And this is causing terrible stress. So to be trustworthy is very important. And also to answer WhatsApp when people want to speak to you. I've discovered to my cost that if you disappear, people can't get hold of you. They are stressed out. They are panicked. They are not happy. So it's it's now my policy if I miss a meeting to to say sorry. And there are some people very good at it and others not so good. So remember, be trustworthy. You know that how you feel about other people. Will they feel the same about you? Thank you. Thank you, Angela. We can have one more last table topic speaker. So is your chance now, whoever wants to speak, you will be the last speaker. Can you volunteer and choose please? Do we have a volunteer? Is there, is there anyone who wants to speak? Anybody else? How about the timer? Timer Ahmad is very quiet. Maybe somebody can take over his timing and he can pick a topic. Yeah, Shan Shan will, will, will take the timing for Ahmad. Ahmad, would you like to try? Timer? Yeah. Okay, which topic please? Yeah? Ahmad? Are you there? Last uh, number. Last uh, number. Uh, 20. Yes. A trustworthy leader goes the extra mile to remedy strained relationships even when it doesn't appear to be required. Can you repeat? A trustworthy leader goes the extra mile to remedy strained relationships even when it doesn't appear to be required. Can you see the screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because my laptop is uh, error, I okay. speak and I can. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The trust is very important to leader in all level because with the trust we can get support from them. For example, if you if we are leader in corporate, maybe uh, have many customer, if we don't have trust from a worker, from client, we can sell our product. The trust is very important in personal life, in public life. If you are politician, I think the all of more all politicians in the world uh, want to be trusted because if uh, society don't trust him, they will be not elected in election. So I think we need to improve our ability how to be someone can be trusted because the trusted is not natural. We can create, we can maintain, we can improve the trust in our life. For example, if we uh, give 
uh, dati from our boss or our director, I think we have to do the best. After we finish the dati, well, I think my uh, our boss, our director will improve their uh, trust for us. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad. Thank you, all table topic speakers. You all did very well. I have done my job conscientiously. So I'm going to return the stage to the table topic. Uh, sorry, to the Toastmasters of the day. Back to you, Shan Shan. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. And that was certainly an interesting table topic session. Oh, don't let me join. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, voting. Right. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the voting for the table topics is up on your screen. Please do the votings. Hold on, hold on. How come you can't vote now? Uh? I can't vote, it seems. You have okay, to vote for, for both votes, sections, can, only then vote. you can submit. Huh? You have to vote for both. There are two sets of people. So you have to vote for one on top and one at the bottom, and only then can you submit. Co-host cannot vote, Vikana. Co-host cannot ah, vote. Ah, no wonder. Okay. Okay, but Patrick's, uh, Patrick also cannot vote. So, Willie, can you check on that? Okay, okay. Understand. Everyone should be able, able to vote. They are not co-hosts. But I can't. You are co-hosts. That's how you can Ah, vote. okay, okay, fine. All right. While everybody is doing the voting, we will proceed with a break first. Let's go for a 10 minutes break. And then now the time is 10.14 on my clock. We will be back by 10.24 to begin the prepare speech. So ladies and gentlemen, and All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the meeting after the break. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin for the next segment, I would like to point out our timer is Ahmad. So for the speakers, please pin his screen for today. We have four spe prepared speech tonight. Our very first Speaker is Patrick Guilfoy. Let me just run through a quick introduction of his project. His is doing engaging humor, level one, evaluation and feedback, the first speech. May I have the evaluator, Navin? to read out the purpose statement. Patrick wants to say something. Uh, Patrick, there is no, there is no sound from you. S cannot hear you. Yep. Cannot hear you. We can't hear you, Patrick. You got to. I guess you got to take your head headset out. No, that's ah, yes. that's not that's not right. the case. The headset is fine. I'm using Blue Yeti. I had the button turned off. No, ah. it's not evaluation and feedback. It is icebreaker. Oh, because the information that was given. My apologies. Then it will be the icebreaker speech, 
and the timing is actually four to six minutes. So Navin, the speaker is doing the engaging humor, level one, and the very first speech, icebreaker speech. Right, so can I have Navin to read out the purpose statement? Navin, you gotta unmute. Yep. Thank you. I was having trouble unmuting just now, so can you give me a minute? Okay, the purpose of this statement is for the project. The purpose of this project is for the member to present a speech on any topic, receive feedback. Uh, no, uh, Navin, Navin, it's yeah, the yeah. icebreaker speech. Yes, the purpose of this speech is for the member to introduce himself to the to the club and the, the people and to connect with us. All the best to you, Patrick. All right, before we begin, I would like to just uh, talk about the timing sequence. So at the fourth minute, the timing timer will flash something green. At the fifth minute, it will be amber. At the sixth minute, it will be red. And Patrick, you have 30 seconds to wrap up before he gives a signal of overtime. Now, Patrick, he is a Canadian aspect, aspect living in Busan, South Korea since 1996 and would like to share a few of his amusing but annoying moments about life in Busan, Korea. Thus, his title of his speech tonight, My Amusing Annoying Moments. Patrick, if you have already pinned the timer, and if you are ready to go, take it away. Thank you very much. Toastmaster of the day. Yes, I've been living in, in Busan, South Korea a long time. Since 1996, I remember the exact day that I arrived in Busan on July 25th, 1996. It was my first time traveling outside of Canada. And when I stepped off the plane, I, I just, I can remember the heat wave. It just, it just literally just hit my face and I could feel suddenly the, the beads of sweat just, just bubbling up on my, on my forehead. And I, and I started going down the stairs and I was thinking to myself, what did I get myself into? That's a long time ago, but thinking back, you know, I, I'm very blessed. I'm a very lucky person. I, I found my wife. I had no intention of getting married, to be honest with you, but I found my wife in, in Busan and we had a family together. So yes, on the one hand, I'm blessed. Let me share a few of my amusing, my annoying but amusing experiences with you. Now, I, I will be honest with you. After you get married, what is one of the things, let me ask you a question. What is one of the things that happens to a lot of men after they get married? What happens? You're so busy, you go to work, you work hard hours, you come home, and it's like it's a circle. It's, it's repetitive, it's repetitive, it's repetitive. You're so tired, you come home, you, you, get on the, uh, you sit on the sofa, you, you watch TV. What happens to your waistline? You might not see it in the beginning, but over the years, slowly, 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 you start, you start filling out that extra space that's in your pants, that's in your shirt. And then you have, and then you have to get new pants and new shirts. But I have news for you. This is, this is Asia. If you are above a size 40 or 42, it's almost godly impossible to find pants 
or a shirt that will fit you. If you are a 40 or a 42, you are extremely overweight. You are big. You, you are a pigga. As some elementary school students will refer to overweight people, pigga, pigga. Okay. It sounds very negative, but it's, but it's, it's really true. So, yes, I'm an elementary school teacher. I love teaching kids. They are adorable, but it really scratches me when the innocent whippersnappers refer to me as, as a pig up. Why did they do that? They don't know any different. They learn a lot from their parents. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Second thing. When I go into a restaurant, whether it's a Korean restaurant, and I want to order, one of my favorite Korean foods is something that is called bibimbap. It's a healthy food, rice, vegetables, mixed together with uh, gochujang, hot pepper sauce. And then when I go into the restaurant, the lady who's serving me, she will say, big sizey? Or in Korean, gopegi, gopegi. Go big. No, I remember one time I was arguing with a woman. I think in hindsight, she was trying to give me a bigger portion for free. Go beggy. Anio, anio. No, thank you. Go beggy. No. <laughs> so that's one of the things that I have to um, put up with. And for, I don't, I haven't traveled a lot in outside of Korea. I've been to Japan. I've, I've been to the Philippines, but I haven't been to too many countries. But in Asia, when you go into a restaurant, one of the things, if you, if you are the first time in a Korean restaurant, one of the things that you will be surprised to see on a table, can you guess what you will see on a restaurant table? Can you guess? Well, I'll show you. You will see a roll, a roll of toilet tissue. I don't know. Is it like that in, in Singapore? <laughs> is, it, is it like, so you will be a little bit petrified and mortified. Why is this toilet tissue on my table? But for me now, I, I don't even think about it. Now, the, the thing that, the third thing that really is a big pet peeve to me, and it's a safety issue. When you go to the subway and you're waiting on the platform, there are three arrows, a straight arrow and an arrow on the right and left side diagonally. Guess which arrow you should not stand on? The straight arrow in front of the door where it opens. But I kid you not, almost every elderly person will stand on that arrow. And so if you're on the train and you're trying to get off, you better watch out because some elderly person will steamroll over you and flatten you like a pancake. Not all the time. But fortunately, I played ice hockey. And with my size, I have a big hip. Yes, stand out, out of the person's way, that is true. But uh, I think sometimes people need to be taught a lesson in safety and manners. Some of you may be frowning and they may not uh, be able to appreciate my sense of, um, what can I say, Sar sarcastic humor. It's an acquired taste. But I just wanted to share with you just a few observations. Another subway pet peeve is something that is called the manwich. And the, the, especially the gentleman. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What a manwich is? When you're sitting down and you open your legs really wide and you don't let anyone else sit down. And the person could be sitting in the center there's a space on the right, there's a space on the left, but because the person's legs are open, two people cannot sit down. 
Now, these are pet peeves that people experience every day, and I usually just ignore them. I'm used to it by now. Depending upon my emotion, my mood that day, it will uh, probably determine how I respond to it. But generally speaking, I try to respond nicely. Thank you very much. Table topic, uh, I should say, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Patrick. It also reminded me of the time I had to let a, lead a tour in Bushan as well. Thank you for reminding that period of time where we had a group of amusing situations as well. Next up, we have our member, Abdul, who will be talking about leadership. His project is from the Dynamic Leadership Level 2, Understanding Your Leadership Style. His short introduction. Barriers to leadership is not believing. May I have the evaluator, Alicia Tay, to read out the purpose statement? Okay, the purpose is the purpose of this project is for the member to identify his or her primary leadership style or styles. The purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspects of his or her primary leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. Back to you. Thank you. Now, before Abdul speaks, let's run through the timing sequence as it's a different timing sequence. His speech timing is five to seven minutes. So at the fifth minute, Ahmad will show a green screen. At the sixth minute, it will be a yellow screen. At the seven minute, it will be a red screen. Following that, Abdul has about 30 seconds to wrap up before Ahmad gets a signal or any device to signal over time. Abdul's speech title is What is Leadership? Abdul, if you're ready and you have pinned the timer, you may take it away. Yes, hello everybody. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever the time is there now. Yes, uh, what is leadership? Okay, leadership. From my experience, when I worked in a construction industry for seven years, I see all kinds of leaders in different contractors. For example, there's contractors, I gave you a couple of names. In the United States, <clears throat> there are a couple of big contractors. I will name them. One is Tishman. That's the biggest contract, one of the biggest. The second one is Toner, which is international all around the world. It could be in Singapore, Japan, America, Canada, Afghanistan, all around. And, uh, and what I see all of these experience with the leaders and the vice presidents that I experience, there's so many kinds of them, different characters, different natures, the way they act, the way they talk, the way they treat their workers, the people all, all around. What I experience, I experience most good and I experience some not too good because some of them are very incompetent, which you think they, they know because of the incompetence is that they don't understand their job well, or they don't put no effort to be good with their people. All you hear is yelling and talking and everything. Some of them are very experienced, very professional, which I really enjoy 
is because we as human beings, with the people, we want our leaders to respect us, to work with us as a teamwork, and to be good with us, and to show everything that we need to learn. For example, I would say Mr. Willie, William Toastmaster, the president. We need more people like Mr. Willie. Why? Because he's willing to work with us. He's willing to listen. He's willing to help us. Because everyone has a weakness in them. Some people want to learn their English. Some people want to learn their writing, their communication skills, whatever it is, Willie is there to help. And as much as he can do, he's willing to do it. But the only way he will help us and you is if you go to him and communicate with him directly and want it bad enough. So we need people like Mr. Willie. It's very hard sometimes to find a president. Being a president, being a leader, it is definitely, definitely, definitely not easy task because there's a lot of pressure. You know, people come to him, people make problems to him, people want everything from him. This is why being a leader, we have to be firm, strong, and we have to be empathy to care about the people. So being a leader is not only just being a leader, you have to have empathy. You have to be brave. You have to be competent and confident. And then the best part I like about it is, is that we all are teamwork. Even you can be a leader. Yes, you, I'm talking to you directly. Anybody can be a leader. If you really want it bad enough, it can definitely happen. It may take some time. Some people, they run to become leaders very fast. Some people, they walk to become a leader. Some people, they just curl to become a leader. You just have to believe in yourself and give some time as long as you're in the same line and you just stick with it. For example, what I see right now, I see a teamwork. I'm gonna read a couple of names. Whatever comes to my mind, if I don't forget, I'll tell you. One is Alicia, teamwork. Jennifer, Sheng Sheng, Jing Yu, and Setra. You guys are very good teamwork. You guys stick with each other. You stick with Mr. Woolley. You stick with me, and I appreciate that. We all have to speak up. If we want to better ourselves, we have to put an effort. Me, myself, I want to become a leader, which is going to take time, but it's okay because I'm learning, is the process. Why am I talking about leader? Being a leader, we have to really understand our job and where we're going. So if you want to be a leader, you have to know the sacrifice you're gonna go through. Just remember that. If you cannot handle it, leave it to someone, like for example, Mr. Woolley, let him handle it. But at the same time, you have to believe in Mr. Woolley because he knows what he's doing, he's an expert. Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster. All right. Yep. Sorry, I was just a uh, step away to answer a call. My apologies. All right. Thank you, Abdul, for that wonderful speech. Next up, we have someone who will now tickle our funny bone because 
she will be attempting the project from the legacy manual, which is the humorous, humorous, uh, humorously speaking manual, project five. May I have the evaluator, Alicia, to read out the objectives? Yes, thank you, Toastmaster of the day. The project objectives, the purpose of this project is for the speaker to present a five to seven minute humorous speech. The speech's primary purpose is to entertain, while a secondary purpose is to make a point. The speech should be based on one theme or subject with all humorous stories and or jokes related to that subject. The humour should come from exaggeration. The speaker is to use body language and voice to enhance the speech. In addition to your oral evaluation, please give written responses to the questions as well. Good luck to you, Toastmaster. Agnes Lowe. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Before Agnes begin, let's have an introduction. She is a school enrichment teacher as well as a tutor, loves music, and usually watches drama during her free time. She enjoys Zumba and loves cycling. Her title of the speech what a wonderful world. Agnes, if you are ready. Okay, uh, testing, can you all hear me? Uh, can you all hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. So, um, so uh, shall I start now? Okay, so I'm going to start now. Okay. Have you ever wondered why recently so many of the people went to supermarket or NTUC to buy what? Guess what? They buy dozens of tissue paper and toilet paper. That is something, until now, I still don't understand. Good evening, club president, fellow Toastmaster, and friends from the world. Until now, I still don't understand why people queue out for toilet paper. Not only in Singapore, if you observe Taiwan, if you observe Hong Kong, if you observe other country, you can see all the shell empty. And what is empty? You have no way to buy toilet paper. I'm thinking, what's wrong with that? I don't understand why I need toilet paper. Two months ago, three months ago, when the government in Singapore started to announce that we have to do it, make a changes. What is the changes? They implement this thing called circuit breaker. And I was like, what? Why call circuit breaker a different terms? But that's because we want to stop this cunning virus, which is known as COVID-19, to stop spreading around us. So we need to implement something. So here we go. All the Singaporean and all the people stationed in Singapore become conscientious citizen. We follow the rule properly. What we do is that we wear masks. Everywhere masks wear masks. And wearing masks is a mask. And the second thing, we need to observe one meters away. If you never observe one meters away, you are going to get fine. Now, I was thinking Singapore is a wonderful place because everybody observes. Never in life, when you want to take an MRT, you find seats. Plenty of seats. No need to really squeeze like a sotong. That I mean a squeeze. And never, you need to, when you take a bus, you will always find a seat. You no need to worry that you have no seat. And that's why. Because we're scared of something. We are very scared of this thing called, this cunning thing called COVID-19, the virus. 
It's anywhere. It can be anywhere. It attack us. But because of this, all of us change. There is a total change in our life. You will find the roadside very quiet. You will find that rock driving on the road. And you start to see a beautiful world. You see many touching scenes. And one example of the touching scene is, I ever saw the father and son wearing a mask and they wear this way. Instead of wearing this way, they pull themselves down and they wear this way because they can't breathe. And the son following the father, like father, like son, they also put on their mask this way. And is this a way that we oh, they just want to they just want to avoid. If people catch them, they need to be fine. But again, we are happy that everybody is following the rules. Not only that, COVID-19 has changed the world that we are living right now. Everything's go online. And the final thing is that for the school teachers, because right now, two months ago, no school, only recently the school term start. The teachers have to take out a new role. And what are the new roles? They have to become a broadcaster. They have to speak to the student online and no longer in the classroom. And who will be the happiest person? The student. Why? Because they will not be in direct contact with the school teachers. And they will say, what a wonderful world. They would all want to go back to the school. Not only that, many of my friends become a good cook. I will see many posters that post online and they will share, today I'm cooking sashimi, tomorrow I'm cooking, cooking another dishes. And everybody start posting and they start, I become a good chef during this circuit breaker period. Wow, not only that, we talk about the older generation. The older generation got no way. There was one, I see old ladies, where they enter to a supermarket and someone called the person, hey, hello, auntie, you need to sign in using a smartphone. And the lady said, I don't even know how to do, how to scan in my item. And the lady was frustrated. But again, there's somebody very beautiful that next to the ladies, the youngster who teach the auntie what to do. Don't you think the world is wonderful? When new things come up, we need to learn new skills. So even for old generation now, they love what? They even love how to play games. And for me, I enjoy learn online exercise. And why online exercise? Because it's free. You don't no need to pay a single stance and you can enjoy Zumba. So here, every morning, I wake up 7 a.m. in the morning. I would look forward to the session where they will start doing the exercise. And I enjoy doing it because it's free. So the COVID-19 can be something very scary, but it's changed the way we look at our life. And it's changed the way we look at data. Now, we used to hit this number called zero, but now we love it. We're asking ourselves a question. When will I see the number zero again? Because zero becomes a very important number. Am I right? Because only when you see zero, we are free. Everybody can go out and free ourselves to do everything that we like. But now, we are only on a partial phase. So, ladies and gentlemen, we may be enter at a very difficult space, uh, situation, but we learn something different. I learned how to do Zoom, which in the past, I don't even have a chance. And now here, I come here and join online Toastmaster. To end this, I would like to share a lyrics that go like this. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. So we will become a better person after this period. Let's enjoy the wonderful work. Back to you, Toast. Master right. of Thank the you, event. Agnes, for that wonderful speech. And yes, some of us are 
itching to leave the house. That is what I would say. Immediately after the phase one started, phase two started, everybody's out of the house. So that is the effects of being at home too much. Our last speaker is Angela Lansbury. Angela, are you there? Thank you. And Angela, please introduce your project. Angela, there is no sound coming from you. We can't hear you, Angela. We can't hear you. You have muted. Angela, the there is no volume from you. There's no sound. Really, you got to unmute her. Oh, okay. No, we can can't hear anything. Meanwhile, while Angela is sorting out the audio issue, may we have CJ to read out the purpose statement of a project? Hey Angela, the purpose of this project is for the member to apply her mentoring skills to a short-term mentoring assignment. The purpose of this speech is for the member to share some aspect of her first experience as a Toastmasters mentor. Good luck, Angela. Can't hear you. Angela, there's no volume. You are not, you, you are. You have omitted yourself. Maybe it's your headset or something. Nothing. Angela, we still can't hear you. I suggest that she lock out and come in again. Yeah, maybe lock out and lock in again. I think she, the other thing I can see is because she did not click the audio. She leave the audio. That's why she's, we cannot hear her. She need to go out and come in again. All right, Angela, you might have to lock out of this meeting and lock in again. It's not, yeah, so maybe. Right. We wait for three, five minutes, and if not, we can continue our break. Oh, really? You pause recording first, or? Welcome, Angela. Finally, we can hear your voice. Wonderful. All right. If you have the time up here. Um, I'm on the mobile because I don't have the password. If you can give me the password, I can come in on, on my laptop and pin it. Otherwise, maybe they can, um, well, I've got you, 
Maybe you could just hold something up when I get there or buzz me. Can you hear me? All right, I'm on. Do take note of the request by Angela for the timing sequence. It's five, five to seven minutes. If you could make a buzzing noise as I'm on the phone. All right, if Angela, if you're ready. Yes. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. You will be very interested in the magic of mentoring and my experiences. In London, I'm known as the Queen of Props because my first mentor taught me how to use props. In my first speech, he told me to wear hats to demonstrate what I was talking about, which was being from England, like this, and visiting Singapore, here's my Singapore hat, and visiting Australia, and here is my Australian hat with the corks. But the other important thing was to remember to have one hat which illustrates the point you're talking about. So, for example, you can all remember that at Christmas, you probably all wore Christmas hats and for speech on Santa Claus would be relevant. The important thing is not to do what I just did now and have too many props, too many hats. You just need one which will remind people of one thing. So I'm going to put on my British hat to remind you that I'm British, although of course I'm also Singaporean. Now recently, I was mentoring a newcomer to Toastmasters. He was a man in his 80s. He was not online. He only had a phone. He didn't have a laptop. He didn't want to do pathways. It was too complicated. He just wanted to learn to talk. What could I do? The only thing I could do was to let him come along to a meeting, join in and do a table topic. So I let him do that twice and each time I briefed the person doing the topics to ask him about his life to get some clue about it. What we discovered was he was a tennis coach. So I got him to give his first speech on what I knew he was interested in, which was playing tennis. And I told him he needed a prop. He said, what can I do? A tennis racket is far too big to show on a little screen. So I said, how about a tennis ball? It's small enough and yet it can be brought big to obscure your entire face. You can make it go left to right. You can even bounce it up and down. So he used that as a prop. I was very pleased with that result. Now, the first thing I would say is perfect props. That's what you need when you're mentoring someone to get them to give a memorable speech. And you'll notice that when you speak to people or listen to people who are promoting a business, they have one symbol for their business. Now, my next idea was alliteration. You're familiar with alliteration, for example, table topics, vocal variety. My tennis player, we had lots of alliterations I could think of. Table tennis, for example, that tennis is not like table te tennis. So there we had a prop. So we might have to rewrite the entire speech to make it fit the alliteration tennis and table tennis, but he was a tutor or a teacher of tennis. Brilliant, we have an alliteration. My life as a tennis teacher. Then finally, persuasion. Persuading somebody to actually give a speech. You can see how I did it very gradually. 
you don't force somebody to do something you get them to do it bit by bit by bit and teach them one thing at a time until they can do the whole thing and they're happy with it so something i learned from thomas tren was to use alliteration to create an acronym so mine is p a p like people's action party and the three things i will remind you about are props here are my props the hat and the tennis ball the alliteration and persuasion that's what i've learnt about mentoring and you can do the same how can i persuade you to do something for me and to ask me to do something for you very simple you contact me you watch my blogs and you speak to me i'm all over the net facebook linkedin everywhere and of course singapore online every friday back to you toastmaster of the day thank you angela for that wonderful speech about inspiring someone who is not so technical advanced to be online and using props as well ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of the prepared speech segment may i have the timers report come on What's the timing for Patrick? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. All right. And then up to and uh, Okay, the timing is actually in the chat. Now let me just double check. But the timing for Agnes? All right, the polling for the vote for the best prepared speaker is up. Please do the voting. Meanwhile, the just a quick check. Are the evaluators ready? Evaluators, you are also reminded to use the word of the day, conscientious in your evaluations if possible. Thank you very much. Okay. Navin, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. So, um, hold on, Navin, hold on, hold on. Now, uh, evaluators to take note, the evaluation timing is two to three minutes. So at the second minute, Ahmad will flash a green screen, two minutes, 30, a yellow screen, three minutes, it will be a red screen. And you have 30 seconds to wrap up the evaluation. We have the first evaluator. <laughs> His introduction reads as, he is a professional snake eater with hobbies of skydiving, bungee jumping, and shark tank swimming. Please take his introduction with a pinch of salt. Navin, if you're ready, take it away. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone, uh, and whatever time you're around the world. And especially to you, Patrick, <clears throat> thank you for giving me the opportunity to evaluate you. And 
this icebreaker is fascinating because you showed us the contrasting of the backgrounds. You told us the date that you actually remember the date that you landed on uh, Busan, Busan, 26th of, 25th of July, uh, 96, if I'm not wrong. And you made a description, you described the heat wave when you came out of the airplane, you know, you were sweating. And then, <clears throat> you know, your regret, you know, hey, you know, maybe this is not such a good idea. But then, fortunes flip. You actually, you, you told us your intention not to start a family. But then, you know, you can't challenge fate and <clears throat> you found a wife and you have a family. And then you told us, you brought us into the world of <clears throat> married men. But you say your waist actually increased. And in Korea, they don't have a waist size for you. Being an expatriate in Korea. Then you segue into eating. What they, everybody loves eating, that's for sure. So you connected with us on that point. And your experience in the Korean restaurant, when people were, you know, shouting at you, you know, and you talked about your, you, you actually spoke in a bit of Korean, you used uh, the accent to try and imitate the uh, dialogue, which was pretty interesting, I, fear, I felt. And then you moved on to traveling in Korea. Now, me, maybe you should reconnect and come back again, because we cannot hear you. I think your internet is having problem. Can you hear now? Can we, can, can we go, go to the second one, Shasha? All right, uh, Navin, you might have to exit and re in and restart the evaluation again. You might want to try that? While well, Navin is handling the audio issue, We will now move on to our next evaluator. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Before, hold on, before uh, Elijah begins the evaluation, let me do an introduction of her. She is the first Pathways DTM in District 102, and she's currently doing her fourth path and will be serving as an area director for the second time. If you need any inquiries about the Toastmasters International's governing documents, she is the person to go to as she is the specialist of Toastmasters International governing documents. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Elisha for her evaluation of Abdul's speech. Thank you, Abdul. Of course, it is very obvious that you are a natural speaker. I enjoy listening to you. Nonetheless, for us to do a speech project, there is a lesson for us to learn by reading through the manual. I find that there are all the objectives stated on the manual is you, you probably need to know. First of all, the objective says you need to discover and identify your primary style. That is a set of questions that you need to answer in order to identify your style. And then you need to talk about the common leadership style, the attribute of a success, successful leader. And then you would like, you, would, you, you should also talk about your own leadership, your primary leadership style. Uh, you, you, can, you have two choices. Either you talk about your personal story or you talk about it in a general manner. 
And then you also should tell us how you should adjust your leadership style to a more effective way. How do behavior and leadership style impact you when you lead? And what would be, what have been the outcome or your desired outcome? Why is it important to adapt your leadership style based on the situation and people being led? What is the purpose of leadership? How do you desire the quality of a good leadership style? Certainly, you did share a little bit of the good quality of a leader that you enjoy. In your entire speech, what I heard was a story about what you enjoy, or uh, what you, in, in a very general sense, you talk about leadership style, and then you, what you have seen, and what you enjoy, and what you wish to have. Does, did your speech match the objective? I will leave it to you to ponder about it. Because when I checked it through, I could not match quite well. I'm not saying that completely not match, but there is a lot of things that you need to work on. Nonetheless, I do enjoy your speech though. You are a natural speaker. Back to you. Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you. No. Right, I'm just waiting for Ahmad to change that screen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the third evaluator. And let me just do a quick introdu introduction of her. She is our incoming Vice President of Education for this Singapore on Online Club. Currently our treasurer, Alicia. She is a happy-go-lucky person who enjoys life, aims to live in the movement, create memories and enjoy the journey more than the destination. Her hobbies are playing the saxophone, digital photography, sports, and being a tourist in my own home country. Alicia, if you're ready, and the timer, if you are all ready, please proceed. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good evening to club president, to guests, and especially to Toastmaster Agnes Lowe. What a wonderful world. Today, I will evaluate Toastmaster Agnes Lowe in two areas. First, the area which she did well, and the other area which those parts of her speech that was a bit lack last year. Now, today, Toastmaster Agnes did very well in the sense of she gave us an appetizer. When she first started the speech, she asked a question, why did everyone like to use toilet paper or buy toilet paper at NTUC? So this appetizer later, later led us to the main course where she served us many dishes and she came up with many examples of humorous stories. She even came up with her own humorous stories. And I liked it that she used dry humor. Dry humor such as no need to squeeze like Toto. That was about the MRT. And the part where now we can look at data. Now we see number zero. We are very happy. And she had a wonderful ending with the words of the song, What a Wonderful World. Now let's go on to the other part of the speech where she could have done better. Now, 
her timing was 7 minutes 55. That means she went over time. And why? And the reason why she went over time was she had too many main causes. In the sense of too many stories for the audience to absorb. Toastmaster Agnes could have focused on lesser stories. And the stories to make it to make her dry humor even better, she must have a twist to her story. For instance, I noticed she the, in the beginning where she had a story of why I don't understand why people buy toilet paper. She could have continued the story with in case they ate too much instant noodles and had stomach ache. That's why they need toilet paper. We were left dangling with why they need toilet paper. And for instance, she talked about the older generation. The kind lady, kind people that teach the older generation how to sign in and sign out of places. She could have acted the frustration of how many times these people taught the older generation. And then the humor could come out even better. Now, to make the stories even more come to life with humor is her lack of vocal variety. As a humorous speaker, you need to adjust your vocals. Loud and soft, fast and slow. Adjust your pitches so that you can have greater effect. Because I can tell you that people will not remember what you tell them the stories, but they can remember how you made them feel. So you need, need to bring in the emotion of the funniness from all the stories. I do see some visual aids, like you took out a mask, but that is not enough. So I would like to see more body language in, in line, in sync with your stories. People are, I think they're feeling a bit disjointed. They like your stories, but you're not bringing them enough life in it. At the end of the st your speech, you should have sung your, the wonderful world. That will have even, even more impact. So to end it all, Toastmaster Agnes, you had good stories, you had appetizer, main causes, but make sure your main causes add in more vocal variety, body language, and emotion to it and would like to he hear more of your humorous stories. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you, Alicia, for the evaluation of Agnes' speech. Our last evaluator is our club mentor, CJ Lin. His profession is a project manager. His favorite quote, People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. CJ is an IT manager by profession, a person who enjoys traveling and doing volunteer work. He is also a polygot, enjoys speaking six different languages, and passionately interested in other people's in interested in other people and cultures so ladies and gentlemen if you're interested in learning another language you know who to approach cj if you're ready take it away can you hear me okay great fantastic friday club president fellow toastmaster and distinguished guests Angela, I love your speech. You are calm, cool, collected. You are conscientious and we can see your grit and determination in being a mentor. You have met the objectives of your speech by sharing with us your journey as a Toastmaster mentor. You connect with the audience in sharing with us your personal story. Your personal story about your mentoring journey is excellent and we can resonate and feel your pain in mentoring an old person. 
you use the props very well. You, you use not one cat, but three different cats. As you know, a picture paints a thousand words and it paints visual images on us. And you have used a volume of vivid vocabulary and alliteration. To improve on your speech, you can add in pauses because I feel that sometimes you are going too fast. You can add pauses to bring up before you deliver the punchline. Add pauses in your speech to create tension in the audience. Second, you can add in role play. You can reenact the different scenario between two people. Add in dialogue to bring out the interaction between you and your mentee. For example, I want to see how you can breathe life into the character. The challenge for you to soar to greater heights is to add in a stronger call to action. You can use a quotation. All you know, Angela is an eloquent speaker. She is as cool as a cucumber. She excels in her vocal variety. Just to take note, to add in dialogue in your speech to reenact the different scenario between your mentor and you. And you can add in a strong call to action to the conscientious audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share my favorite quote from Lorenzo Snow. Be better today than you were yesterday. Be better tomorrow than you are today. Overall, your speech is enchanting, enriching, enlightening for me. Keep learning, keep growing, keep improving as a mentor, Angela. Back to you, TMD. Thank you, CJ. It's very encouraging and with all the quotes that you have, I'm just wondering, do you have a quote bank in your brain that you can just pull out the quote at any time? Because every time I hear your evaluation, you usually have a quote in that evaluation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the evaluation. May I check with the timer, Ahmad, everybody qualifies or? Right, uh, just to note, Navin had issue reconnecting, so he is not able to come back into the meeting. For Patrick, uh, your evaluation, he will pass it to you, a silent evaluation. All right. Okay. Now, uh, the voting has come up, although some of the timing is so, hold on, let me just, yep. Right. Right. It's okay, no problem, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, club president has said so, so please cast the votes and the vote should be on your screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone through the table topics, speeches, evaluation. There is someone who is listening intently, listening and at the moment I see he's listening intently, she appeared. <laughs> She's listening all the way to our the use of language and all the things that she can find and she's ready to give you the language evaluation report. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our language evaluator Lee Buckley to the stage. 
Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. I would like to congratulate, firstly, six people for using the word of the day, conscientious, particularly to our Table Topics Master, Jennifer Lim, who was encouraging everyone to use the word throughout the night. Well done, Jennifer. Jennifer mentioned the word four times, Vasco once, CJ twice, Asmina once, Agnes and Shanshan, our Toastmaster of the day, once as well. Congratulations, everyone. I would like to start with the incorrect usage of the English language. So this includes grammar, singular, plural, and a few suggestions. Someone said, speaking about table topics. So we don't speak about, we speak of. Okay, so the correct phrase is, speaking of table topics, let's do something. Someone said, to give an example, for example. There's no need to say, for example, after saying, to give an example. Someone said, do you think I want to trust that person anymore? A better way to say it is, do you think I would trust that person again? 30 years ago, I trust and love a club. 30 years ago was past tense. So it should be, I trusted and loved a club. We have to trust on ourselves first. We have to trust ourselves first. Someone said, my lecturer angry. Yeah. Perhaps a better way is my lecturer gets angry. Someone said, is the person trustworthy or not trustworthy itself? You can just simply say, is the person trustworthy? They work making products. A better way to say it is they produce or manufacture goods. What I experience most good should be what I experienced was mostly good. Observe one meters apart. Okay. One meter is singular. A better way to, do, to put it could be observe social distancing of one meter apart. Only recently, the school term start. A better way to put it is schools reconvene recently. The day you landed on Busan, you don't land on Busan, you land in Busan. Does your speech match the objectives? Did the speech meet the objectives? Would be a better way to put it. Have lesser stories. A better phrase is have fewer stories or have less stories. There's only one main course, so there are no main courses. In terms of Singlish and colloquialism, Someone said, you want to try? Okay. We, I would encourage everyone to try and use proper English. A better way to do it is to say, would you like to give it a go or would you like to have a try? Why I say so? A better way is why and then pause and then continue. Someone said, gonna. No, it's going to. Someone said, cause. It's because. I would like to stress as well the importance of pronounce, pronouncing uh, sorry, and enunciating our words when speaking. The phrase, your mistakes might as well be your own instead of someone else's. A couple of people said someone else. There is an apostrophe S at the back of else. So, so a better way is to pronounce it as someone else's. Again, someone is singular. So the phrase, when someone trusts you, give them your trustworthiness. Certainly is pronounced certainly. The primary purpose, sorry, the speech primary purpose. Okay? There's an apostrophe S, the speech's primary purpose. I would also like to remind everyone about using plural versus singular. Many customer, it's many customers. Prepared speeches, we have more than one prepared speech tonight, so it should be prepared speeches. And again, with reference to Toastmaster, Toastmaster is when you refer to a single person, a Toastmaster. Okay, please be mindful there is an S at the back of the word Toastmaster. So it's Toastmasters, when you refer to Toastmasters International, to a club or to a collective group of Toastmasters. I feel it's important as well to show respect when we are requesting someone to do something. And therefore, we should always include please. 
Okay, and again, this is my personal opinion. So I would say, may I have a volunteer, please? Or may I please invite the evaluator to present the speech purpose statement? Some notable phrases. Jerry said, trust is based on integrity. He also reminded us to maintain integrity at all times. CJ, fantastic Friday. In his table topics, he said his, he loved his... So he loved his Liverpool team so much that he sang to us. You never walk alone. During his evaluation, he had phrases like challenge to soar to greater heights, cool as a cucumber. He even shared a quote with us. Well done, CJ. Thomas, he talked about committing himself or committing to someone for life. Can we really afford to trust them? Trustworthiness, it's your personal brand, and therefore you should portray yourself to others. Shan Shan, do not take trust lightly. Ahmed said, trust is very important to leaders at all levels. I love how Patrick said, you start filling out the extra space that's in your pants and your shirts. He also used expressions like, you are a pigger, big sizey, man witch, and a Korean expression as well. Well done. Abdul Karimi, you have to be empathetic, brave, competent, and confident to be a leader. Agnes said, like father, like son, only when we see zero that we are free. She also sang to us, oh, in a way, <laughs> the lyrics of the song, What a Wonderful World. Angela reminded us to have only one hat at a time. She also used the expressions, I think, props, iteration, and persuasion. Well done. Alicia, I love how she used the word lackluster to describe uninspiring, bland, and monotonous. And to end, I would, like, I would love to leave you with this quote from Martin, sorry, Martin Luther King Jr. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. All right, thank you. Now with this, we will start to take note of all our mistakes and improve on the users of language. That is the reason why we have someone to help us to take note of the mistakes we make because we will never know when we actually make that mistake. Sometimes it's unconscious, un, uh, unintentional, or sometimes it's an in, intentional way of doing things. Now, the next person that I have already introduced, but hopefully, he has caught some of our pause fillers. TJ? Uh, CJ, there's no volume from your side. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, for Willie Law, there's one a er and one n. An. Lee Buckley is perfect. Jennifer Lim, one R. And for table topic, Vasco, the first speaker, there's two right and two so. For Jing Hu, there are two so. For Abdul, there's one R. For Jerry, there's one N. Asmina, there is one E er and two N. For Raman Plit, there is one So. For Vikana, there is one So. For Alicia, is perfect. Thomas Chen is perfect. For Shanshan, there is one So. For LD, there is one So. For Noriko, perfect. Angela, there is one So. Patrick, there's one so. And for Abdul, there's one you know. 
Agnes 1N and 3 so. Angela 1 right. Alicia 1 so. And Navin 1 you know. Back to you. All right. And Thank you, CJ, for that interesting report. And most of the time, we don't really take note of our cost fillers. That's why we need someone to help us to take note of that. Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe that our club president has the results of the table topic speakers, best speaker, and the best evaluator. And he will also continue with his closing address after the awards announcement. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our club president, Mr. Willie, to the stage. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmaster and guests. The best table topic speaker is Adia Lasbury. As the best prepared speaker, Abu. The best evator is none other than your incoming BPE, Alicia Cha. <laughs> despite, despite the tanzo that we have, US and Singapore, Abu made an effort to prepare his speeches despite his lavish availability. Both Alicia and myself have mentored him into his speeches and guide him how to write a speech, written speech. We guide him, we ask him to take a book, take a diary and write every day of the daily happenings. The trust that he had placed in us that ever asked to guide him further in the next speech. I reiterate my opening speech again. Trust is defined as a psychology stage comprising the intention to accept probability based upon positive expectation of the intention of behavior of one another. When we look at academic literature or leadership and trust, we see many possibilities of what leaders should do in order to build trust and to increase the willingness of their followers to make them vulnerable. Toastmaster Abdul, in his speech, did mention a lot of what I have done for the club. It made me enable me to help the club and together with the new executive committee to reach a higher note. We are such feedback. We, we can't go further. And we, we, this feedback enable us to understand the member better, to engage them better. Fellow Toastmaster, as some of you are the incoming cup officer or the incoming district officer or whatever roles you are taking part is those master. You are here to serve the member. Serve it with dignity. Inspire the member. And we try to accommodate their requests. But we know that we cannot accommodate to every request that literate the truck standard. Trust is one thing that we can help members to improve their our credibility in running any Toastmaster Club or running any district, running as a district role. Do you agree that trust is a, a good point to take note? Although we may not be a good leader because we cannot be good, good in everything. We cannot be good in empathy, we cannot go in server leadership, we can be a bit here and there. 
So I leave you with one word. Trust your leader so that and I I hope to see you next Friday, same time, same time. Good night, everyone.